People know that the system is old, but I don't think they realize just how old it is. They see the beautiful old architecture in the stations and they think it's just historic, just like seeing artifacts in a museum somewhere. What our riders don't realize, though, is that in our system, it's not just the architecture that's 100 years old. It's a lot of the basic technology as well. The infrastructure is old. That's a copy. 1001 Bravo. Did you get that? As per control, yeah, you're going to be turned that second down. At West 4th Street Tower, we're still doing things the old-fashioned way. It works, but it's an antiquated way to run a subway. I think it's Second Avenue as needed. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a Brooklyn bound local train at 23rd. But the cab should probably. So here at the West 4th Street Tower, we have a, a, a 1930s interlocking machine and indication panel, while safe and reliable, it's an old one. Its role is to provide uh, safe train movements through and around the West 4th Street area. The dispatcher follows the train movement. He enters information into uh, fall sheets, into what's called the iTrack system as well. The tower operator, by using these levers and manipulating these levers, are able to actually move the switches uh, located on the tracks, uh, they're able to uh, operate the signals, may make, uh, allowing them to go to their full danger position or to what's known as the clear position and allowing trains to move. Equally important though is, is train tracking and knowing where trains are and what service is being provided along the corridor. So all of that goes on here in the West 4th Street Tower. We're now located inside the relay room for the West 4th Street interlocking. This interlocking plant is uh, upwards of 80 years old. Reliability is certainly becoming more and more of an issue with the age. It's very hard to maintain. In front of me here, uh, actual electromechanical relays that in many respects are the original equipment. Some of it has been refurbished and replaced. However, it is still 1930s and before technology. This equipment is not supported at all by the railroad industry. We are fully self-sufficient and self-sustaining. We have a signal shop that can replace the parts, they rebuild these relays, and then when any modernization is going on, we try to make sure that we scavenge to retain the parts so that we can provide replacement for those that remain in service. And this is most important, the cabling that provides this connectivity between the interlocking machine and the relays as well as the equipment in the field on the actual tracks is the original cabling as well. A lot of this cable is cloth covered cable. So there's a lot of risks. If there was any small fire, there's a lot of risk of us losing this entire interlocking machine because it would be so hard to contain the fire. Communications Based Train Control, or CBTC, is a massive, multi-decade project to modernize the subway's traffic control system. When CBTC is implemented on a subway line, the subway line becomes safer and more reliable. It uses less energy and it allows us to run more trains per hour and increase service. Thanks to the MTA Capital Program, we've implemented CBTC on the Canarsie line and are currently installing it on the Flushing line, which will be ready for service in 2017. After that will be the Queens Boulevard line. To understand the benefits of CBTC, we need to talk though about traditional fixed block signaling. On a fixed block signaling system, the railroad is divided into blocks to keep trains a safe distance apart. Blocks are electrically distinct segments of the line and can vary in length depending on the speed limit and geometry of a segment. When a train is detected in any part of a block, that block is considered occupied. The signaling system thus keeps the train behind it at a safe distance by prohibiting movement into an occupied or buffer block. This safe distance is enforced by stop arms which can activate the brakes of a train if it tries to move into one of these blocks. It's a very safe system, but there are many limitations. First, there's no precise location or speed control. We never really know where the train is and we're limited in our ability to control the speed of the train. Not knowing exactly where a train is means we can't safely operate them more closely together. 
so we can increase the number of trains when ridership warrants it. Secondly, the fixed block system is very complicated in terms of infrastructure. It takes a massive amount of wayside signals, cables, power, and other ancillary equipment to operate the system. Implementing CBTC solves all of these issues. CBTC uses a moving block system that is under centralized control. With CBTC, we continuously know every train's location, direction of travel, and speed. This precision allows trains to travel together more closely and with increased safety. Being able to reduce the space between trains means we can provide more trains per hour when ridership warrants it. The wayside infrastructure needed for CBTC is also much simpler. Less maintenance is required because there are fewer things that go wrong. Converting a line to CBTC is a massive undertaking. We have to retrofit both the train cars and the infrastructure of the line. The Canarsie Line CBTC project required all new trains and wayside infrastructure. It was a billion dollar project that took seven years to complete. But now that it's implemented, we have the capacity to support the continued population growth along that line. The Flushing Line CBTC project is currently underway as well. With cars being retrofitted at Corona Shop and wayside upgrades taking place all up and down the line. We are here at the Corona Maintenance Shop. This is the, the home for the R188 subway cars, which the CBTC equipment is installed on. We're inside the subway car. This is actually the operating cab of the subway car where the train operator controls the train from. These panels were installed, they replaced the older panel with the controller for power and brake and a dual display. When the train is in service you'll see various different colors on this screen. You'll see this as a dynamic display where the pointer will be following what the real train speed would be and you also see some other indications as CBTC establishes those speed limits what they are as well. So right now we're, we're basically looking at undercar equipment for R188 subway car and part of the CBTC equipment is this TIA, which is a transponder interrogator antenna. It detects or communicates with transponders that are mounted on the track and basically determines where the train is. So every time the train is moving and it goes over one of these transponders, it gives information. So now the system knows where the train is. As you know, the flushing line is heavily, heavily ridden. We have a huge population, and the only time you can get any real work done, you have to have a shutdown. And these full shutdowns allow everybody to piggyback, whether it be the contractors or New York City Transit, to all maximize the areas that they can work in and get as much work they can done in that short amount of time span. How you doing? I'm Andy Lebrano. I'm the resident engineer on the flushing signal contract. And at the present, we're south of Main Street Station. What's going on here is there's a lot of work that's happening at the present time. We have power cable work. We have track department out here doing rails all over a switch. We're, we're wiring, we're grounding, installing conduits, we're testing. We're also doing stationing, where we know exactly where the transponders are being uh, installed on the trackway. And we're going to have a few more shutdowns this year. And uh, a lot of work is going to be performed in that time frame. So, you know, be patient with us and uh, we appreciate it. When you think about it, it's amazing how a system that's over 100 years old can still operate 24-7 and carry so many people. But this didn't happen by accident. The subway was planned and built to keep New York growing for decades. And today, a century later, the city continues to grow. And we're working hard to keep New York moving with a system that grows with it. With CBTC, we're building for the future. <laughs>